So marriage is God's idea. Now, after this, sadly, tragically, chapter 3 of Genesis, the fall occurred and selfishness entered in it, sin and rebellion against God. But now fast forwarding to the New Testament, thousands of years later, after the Savior has appeared, Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, writes this in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. Wives, speaking now to you, Melinda, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, speaking to you, David, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, a tall task. He, he died for her. So all of us approximate that. And we trust Christ. We'll be able to do this as he calls you to. That he might sanctify her. There's a purpose here. Having cleansed her by the washing of water and with the word, this white dress represents the cleansing, the purity. It's a picture of the church one day before Christ. <laughs> So that he might present the church to himself in splendor like we have today, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy without blemish. We lose a picture of that day. In the same way husbands should love their wives as their own bodies, he who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. David, you're to nourish and cherish one another, as Christ does the church, because we're members of his body. Now, Paul is going to quote this ancient scripture found in Genesis 2, written by Moses thousands of years prior. He's going to quote it now. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And now the mystery is going to be unfurled for us to see. The mystery is profound. And I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Why? Because it's a picture of redemption, of God redeeming us through Christ Jesus. This is why God hates divorce. Why it says in Malachi that he does not want that. That is not his will. Why Matthew 19 says, well, God has put together, let no one break asunder. Why? Because it pictures God's love for us. You see, this picture of God in the gospel, what we call the gospel, Jesus Christ, is what David and Melinda's marriage communicates. Primarily it is about God and what he's doing. Certainly he's invited Melinda and David to participate and given them great joy, which just shows you how God, good God is. Hey, David? Yes. <laughs> I know when you saw her, you went, oh my goodness. <laughs> that's what I said when I saw her. She's beautiful. You don't deserve her just like I don't deserve Desi. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a picture of what God is doing. And you know that, right? That you're representing Christ to a whole culture that's watching. Therefore, your fidelity, your love of her, it's more about your happiness. It's about holiness and God's word to mankind. You're just another testimony of a light shining in the darkness. And Linda, I know you know this, that your submission and love for David and respect is, is a picture of saying there is a God and we will respond to him. And I will, I will show that how I respond to my husband. See, folks, this is what God wants to communicate this afternoon. Thank you for coming, by the way. That he saved us, that he was merciful to us, that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, existing before time. His son who eternally existed but came to earth as a man some 2,000 years ago to show us mercy and compassion and poured out his life for us so that God the Father's wrath against our rebellion and disobedience was poured out on Christ. He did not deserve it, we did, but he received it for us. And then three days later, God raised him from the dead, and we are called his bride. The church is called the bride of Christ, among other things. And, and Christ is our bridegroom, and one day he will come back, and we will have a marriage supper of the Lamb. David stands here representing Christ for all those who believe. Melinda stands here representing the church submitting. So would you consider this truth and come to Christ even now? If you do not know Him as your Savior, I know that's David and Melinda's desire. Now, let's continue the story of Christ's love for the church by bearing witness to David and Melinda's love for each other in their covenant vows.
Linda, you are my perfect gift from God. And I gladly leave my father and mother to become one flesh with you. David, you are my perfect gift from God. And I gladly leave my father and mother to become one flesh with you. I commit to love you as Christ loved the church and to lay my life down for you as he laid his life down for us. I commit to submit my life, ambitions, thoughts, and emotions to you, just as the church submits to Christ as the man. I promise to love you as I love myself, to consider your feelings and desires above my own. I will never divorce you, and I will never give my heart or my body to another. I promise to love you as I love myself and to consider your ambitions and your decisions above my own. I will never divorce you, and I will never give my heart and my body to another man. You will be my best friend. I will trust you completely, and always believe the best about you. You will be my best friend. I will respect you fully, and I will always speak well of you. I love you, and I will never withhold myself from you. You will always be enough for me. You will always be enough for me. And I will always have eyes on you. I will never withhold myself from you. You will satisfy me completely. And I will intoxicate you. God loves us so passionately. What a picture of that love when we respond as the one is responding to David's love. Well, my friends, we read in the Bible that when God makes a covenant, he normally gives a sign or a seal of that covenant. In the Old Testament, for example, when he made a covenant with Noah, he said, never destroy the earth again by water. He gave a rainbow as a sign of a seal. Um, it was to be a continual reminder uh, of this covenant that was made. In the same way now, David and Melinda made a covenant. We witnessed to it. And so there's a, a symbol of what has been promised. David, what symbol do you have of your marriage covenant? A ring. <laughs> Uh, this ring that he selected is a symbol of this covenant. Why? It's made of a precious metal, as these covenant vows are precious. Uh, it's endless until broken by some outside force, as this covenant is not to be broken until death breaks an outside force. We're now going to seal the verbal expression of the covenant with the exchange of rings. David, as you've done, please place the ring on Melinda's finger and repeat after me. I, David. I, David. Take you, Melinda, as my wedded wife, to love you according to God's word, to forsake all others, to stand by you in every trial, to romance you, to be your best friend. With this ring, I give you my name and my affection. Melinda, place on David's finger. And Melinda, receive you, David, as my wedded husband, to love you according to God's word, to forsake all others, to stand by you in every trial, to romance you, to be your best friend. With this ring, I receive your name. I receive your affection and love and give you my heart. Amen. Well, this time, David and Melinda have chosen to celebrate this union by um, participating in the Unity Candle. Perhaps you've been to a wedding and seen this. You have two candles here lit, representing their two lives. Separate until this moment, where in God's eyes they've been united. They both light the center candle and extinguish the two independent candles.
and we'll see us and you'll find your life together. And while that's being done, we're going to uh, have a song ministered to us by Zeke and Jenny Cuevas in Christ Alone, accompanied by Jeannie on the piano. 